Discover the hidden mysteries of wealth and entrepreneurial success placed in Scripture to advance God's kingdom. This is the Ms. Bankable Show, where you'll learn biblical and practical keys needed to unlock your business's six-figure potential. Kingdompreneurs, it's time for Marketplace Dominion. And now, here's your host, the business-building expert herself, Ms. Sade Banks. Hello, are you looking to increase your wisdom in the prophetic and in business? If so, then you are in the right place. Welcome to the Miss Bankable Show, where today we are going to be discussing the rise of the marketplace profit. Hallelujah, yes. <laughs> and I have here with me my mentor, my friend, and also my business partner, Chief Prophet, Dr. Tala Price. Welcome yes. to the Miss Bankable Show. Yes. Hallelujah. You guys, this has been like five years in the making. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yes, and God is so good. And so before we kick off, let me just introduce who I am. My name is Shade Banks, also known as Miss Bankable, and I'm the host of this show. And I was graced by the Lord during the pandemic to take my clients from six to seven figures to um, gain lucrative government contracts, as well as go from three to 800 in their downline. I am an author, I'm a coach, I'm a mentor, and I'm also a prophetic mentor here at the congregation, uh, excuse me, a prophetic minister, excuse me, here at the congregation of the mighty in Tulsa, un Oklahoma, under my chief apostle, Dr. Paula Price, okay? And so before we get into today's content, because I know you guys are excited, you've been seeing the posts, they've been seeing the emails, yes. they are ready, you guys have really been responding to the clips that I've been sharing of Chief Tala, you guys are loving it, so get ready. I need for you guys to do me a favor, though. Share, 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 yeah. and then share again. Okay, share on all of your platforms because the people of God need to hear this. And before we really get into today's message, I want you to look at my hair. Okay, right. ain't she lovely? Okay, so I want to thank. <laughs> <laughs> I want to show some love to my sponsors, such a lady extensions, who truly blessed me with the 16, 18 inch um, straight bundles, yeah. as well as a 16 inch four by four HD closure. And this is from her sophisticated collection, the Silk Minky Straight. Okay, yes. so go ahead, go to her website, www.suchalady x t e n d dot com and when you make your purchase put in the coupon code miss bank m s b a n k and you will get 15 percent off and this information is also in the description of the broadcast all right the yes. second housekeeper thing we're going to go to today it's for you to make sure that you're downloading on the podcast platform. You guys, we have a goal of reaching 5,000 subscribers, 5,000 downloads by the end of July. So I'm depending on you to do it. I can pray, 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 but I need your works and your faith in this broadcast and what God is dispensing for us to really take this off and to make it go out to all the places that it needs to. Okay. Yes. And finally, we want to make sure, because you know, one of the staples here at the Miss Bankable Show, Chief, uh -huh. is that we pray for businesses at the end of every broadcast. Absolutely. So right now, go ahead, put your comments in, put in your business name, yes. right? And the last 10 minutes or so of the broadcast, we're going about an hour today. Mm -hmm. We, Chief Prophet Tyler and myself, are going to pray accordingly as the God, as the Lord leads for your businesses. Now, let me go ahead and introduce Chief Prophet Tyler Price. Yay! I'm so excited, you guys. God is so good. So Chief Tyler Price is a business advisor who enjoys motivating and inspiring new entrepreneurs to conquer their dreams. Her, develop, her developmental focuses are exploring the economy hidden with each individual, building a soul of success. Ooh, yeah, God. I'm going to say that again. Building a soul of success. Learning the three keys to conquest, how to win, lose, and recover all. Yes. It's a business philosophy that she learned from her mother and mentor and my chief apostle, Dr. Paula Price. So for more information on Chief Tala, I want you guys to write it down now. It's www.talaprice.com. That's T-A-L-A 
Christ.com. And also, I want you to do one final thing before we get into this very illustrious discussion today. Hallelujah and anointed. I want you to get your cash app out and get ready because yes. you guys are going to want to so, so richly into this woman of God. She is going to open up your understanding yes. of the prophetic and of business and how the two mingle together to bring prosperity and wealth for the advancement of the kingdom and also for your treasury as well. So I'm just going to give you her cash app right now. It's dollar sign Tala, T-A-L-A price. Again, that's dollar sign T-A-L-A price. And make sure you're getting your seeds ready, ready, ready. So without further ado, Chief, you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. So the first question that we wanted to make sure that we asked you was, what is a marketplace profit? Well, I love the subject matter. First off, you know, I think it's a uh, privilege to be on the show and I love supporting what you're trying to do because this is something that uh, you are. I mean, this is who you are bona fidely, authentically as a prophet. So to lay a foundation to answer that question, I want to kick off by saying that there, not every prophet is the same. Okay. Okay. Because one thing that most people don't realize is that, you know, we have a generic understanding of the prophetic. Oh. Somebody just speaks out something they feel like they hear in their spirit and then they go and they share it. Right. Okay. And they share what those thoughts are. So we've been taught to really identify and work with prophets on a generic level and one that kind of uh, uh, literally sandwiches everyone together in the same category. Mm -hmm. And the challenge with that is that let's talk about yourself. Can we talk about you today? Yes. Right. Okay. All right. Because when you got into this, you started noticing that there were certain aspects and features of who you are and what you do that were not like other prophets. Is that true? Yes. And you started noticing that your focus, your emphasis, the things that God would tell you in prayer were different than other prophets. Absolutely. Even your expression. Yes. Right. Yes. The way you express yourself prophetically yes. was also different than other prophets. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And so, if you know, that can kind of bring a lot of confusion if we lock everything into a generic cookie cutter model of what we think a prophet is yes. or how we think everyone should express themselves. There are prophets out there who don't do all of the hollering and the antics and the flares and all of that. Is that true? Yes, yes, They're yes. not like that. You know, in fact, the, they, their prophetics work so subtly with the intuitive nature of their personality, instincts, and makeup that they almost don't regard themselves as a prophet or true. don't see that God uses them prophetically because they don't sound like and look like that. <laughs> Exactly. So because they're not behaving in that manner, uh, their prophetic abilities can almost go unnoticed or be misidentified. Okay. Does that, is that okay? That makes perfect sense. Well, you yes. were misidentified. Absolutely. For many years, many right? Years. And then you took the assessment, Yes. right? Uh, uh, Dr. Paula yes. Price has uh, uh, innovated a way for people to really identify themselves for this reason. She yes. made something called the standardized ministry assessments. And she did them because not the, you know, because people always want to, uh, in the body of Christ, be so sensitive, you know, on certain matters. But we always think that it's, you know, someone trying to tell you who you are or force you into a, a particular uh, uh, posture or mm -hmm. purpose or mm -hmm. Or corner or a label and she didn't design it for those reasons she designed it for the reasons you took it yes. all of those years ago yes. and now look at you today right Great. so she designed it for all of those reasons years ago because of people like yourself that were wondering, why do I express myself differently and am I a prophet I feel like I dream I know I hear from God but I'm not an exact replica of what I'm seeing out there. And so as a result, your your calling, your purpose, all the things that God placed on the inside of you can easily get lost. Very much so. Okay. And it's nothing, Dr. Price says, uh, uh, three things that probably drive you crazy. And I've, I've known it as a coach for years, because you know, I'm also a coach uh, that does this on a regular basis. I have my own cash of clients that I help walk through this process oh, on, yes. a, okay, yes. uh, often over the last 15 plus years. I know it's hard to believe because I look like I'm 21, but no, I've actually been doing this for over 15 years and really bringing people into purpose and destiny. So when we're talking about identifying a marketplace profit, we had to lay the foundation that not all the same. No. So when she did the assessment, she wanted a way to actually begin to classify not a generic calling, but specific attributes, mm. expressions, yes. Yes. abilities, and features in people's makeup that coincided specifically with the calling mm. and the sphere yes. and even the, the target group 
they were designed to reach. Yes. Absolutely. And those three things can drive you crazy if you want to just classify yourself generically as a minister. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you did ministry. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. You were working in church and do whatever. And and this whole side of herself was being constantly buffeted and misunderstood Absolutely. and misconstrued because they didn't understand why she didn't fit their generic cookie cutter, you know, catch all mm -hmm. definition of ministry and minister. Yes. And so therefore what God literally ordained and designed you to reach, okay? Mm -hmm. The audience, the sphere and the particular calling mm -hmm. was going unrecognized. Absolutely. And it had you in a place spinning Okay, Absolutely. of lack of identity and all of that. Mm -hmm. So there are marketplace prophets out there, marketplace ministers out there who are reeling. You're having an identity crisis because you're not understanding why you don't fit. You you know what you say is clashing, why you don't sound like somebody else because you were literally, you're talking about Jeremiah from the womb. We like to quote that. Actually, the exact quote is before the womb, right? Before, yes. before he entered the womb, mm -hmm. he was called to be a prophet to the nations. Why is that important to say before he entered the womb? Because before you entered the womb, do you recognize that you came in out of your mother's matrix with very specific mm. abilities? My God. We said the gift and calling is without repentance. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. The gifts, plural, calling, singular, without repentance. So that means your gifts, your endowments that are native before the womb means that's native to your makeup. That is how God designed you to function. And now you're out in the world with people who don't know where you belong and fit. And you're being frustrated because you don't know where you belong and fit. And there's this constant wrestle and tug and back and forth and trying to deal with those things because you have not been able to identify the best use, place, and environment for your functions. Very true. Isn't it true? Absolutely. Because you shifted environments. Oh, yes. And all of a sudden became this person. Yes. Because it's not enough to know that you are a prophet. You also need to know what your assigned sphere is spiritually and then your assigned environment naturally the best environment that will receive and benefit from what you have to offer our abilities don't work well in every environment that's like a lawyer trying to practice law in a hospital mm -hmm. unless you're on the legal team they don't really need you in the surgery room exactly they're not looking for legal advice on how to do an operation and they'll get annoyed they'll get and do that does it happen to you how many guys can identify already with this conversation that people have gotten annoyed with you at church and okay <laughs> they, they're like we don't know what to do with you and then you feel rejected and then you feel abandoned and you feel a lot of things because you don't know how to take the best of who you are and actually use it in a way in which you can give fruit and results because a lot of times you can be in a church and they can let you express yourself prophetically right but you don't get fruit. Yes. So you give a prophetic word here and there, but you're not able to produce the fruit of what your mantle is in the earth to do. It's called the see and say ministry. The see and say, you know, the no jump fruit. up and do whatever. So they'll let you do that and, and be fine with it. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to replicating what God put on the inside of you to produce a product, that's where the wrestle and affliction begins to come in. Absolutely. And then you're put back into these corners and places and wondering why mm -hmm. this is happening. Mm -hmm. So what Dr. Price did that I thought was important for myself as well is to say that not every prophet is the same and not every expression is going to be a cookie cutter because they don't all serve the same purpose. Why? Because they, they are literally designed to be an agency for God to meet all of the needs of his people. My God. Is that okay to say? Oh, yeah. That's so right. marketplace prophets were literally built up to meet very specific kingdom needs. Remember, if we're a kingdom, how many things do you think are involved in the kingdom? Oh, many things. You have the people, you have economy, you have health care, you have education. The whole kingdom is a whole societal structure. Exactly. So if we have to meet the needs of an entire society, wouldn't God have different ministry types, ability skills like we see in the natural world in our own government? How many agencies does it take to run the United States? Some of you guys are employed by them right there listening to us right now. And they're employing your gifts and abilities in very particular divisions, departments, arenas and spheres. We know even from just the seven mountain teaching 
Yes. So if there are yes. seven mountains, Dr. Price calls them spheres, yes. but you know, you guys know them more popularly that way. But if there are seven mountains, then there has to be at least seven different ministerial types just to meet those needs. My God. Just to, just to address those things. And you don't have to be this general practitioner that has to be the catch-all drawer for every need in the body of Christ, because that also has driven some of you crazy. I know when I was starting off in the prophetic, felt like I needed to be uh, able to answer every prophetic question in every sphere on every subject matter in everywhere. You don't have to be a general practitioner, oh, right? Hallelujah. That's why God made us a collaborative. That's why he made it a network. That's why we call them prophetic companies because inside of a prophetic company should be a consortium of talents working together to meet a diversity of needs. Why we have five goals, right? Come on, five different branches to deal with five different dimensions of needs in a society. Mm -hmm. And so if we sometimes can give each other the benefit of that doubt, get up out of each other's spheres and corners and stop making you, me, and me, you, yes. we can actually benefit the entire world the way the Savior has wanted us to. So if you're listening today, we know that there's at least seven different kinds, right, of prophets that we need to be able to answer different, all of those mountains. Okay, Dr. Price actually found 16 of them, if you're watching today, 16 of them. And why that's important to you is that now you can identify yourself the way anybody else in the world would. If you eat, you got your MBA, yes. you graduated, you're in business, yes. but you you don't just go out there and tell people you do business, do you? No, you have you, to have you specific. announced in the beginning your right. resume. Yes, I it do. was very specific type of business, yes. so you would know why you want to engage Sade. She's in school right now to become a prophet herself, yes. right? So you would need to know why you want a marketplace prophet mm -hmm. over a governmental prophet over a intercessory prophet yes. over a ecclesial prophet, you see? So you want to know why you want to engage it because then people are misjudging you, misidentifying you, misplacing you, don't understand your words, don't understand how God's talking to you because they don't understand the whole sphere that supports who you are. Mm -hmm. So if you need to know something about business and marketplace and want to reach into that stream of God, because he says we all see in part and prophesy in part. Yes. So you're going to get the part pertaining to business. Absolutely. And you're going to see things pertaining to business yes. so that you can bring that part of God's mind into the planet and into action. Does that make sense to you all today? Right. So she doesn't have to walk around trying to be every prophet to every man in every sphere. She exactly. can now go out there and say, I specifically specialize in this. Yes. And if you want some answers in this, this is what my mantle as a prophet will bring to you. Mm -hmm. So now they don't have to sit there and judge you about all that with someone so down the street did. You can't compare her to a prophet down the road because that prophet may specialize in a completely different area. Exactly. Is that okay to say? They may be dealing with something else. So as a result, we have to have classifications. I know we don't always like the titles and the labels, but they're not about ego tripping. They're about doing this public safety, safeguarding her and the people so they know why they're engaging your ministry. So when you put a title on it, it makes them understand why they need to deal with you versus someone else, right? And what kind of matters you'll be able to address. So if you're a marketplace prophet today, there's you are in the planet for very specific reasons because God relies on your mantle. He relies on you to do a couple of things that we can summarize, right? Okay, yes, to yes. lay that foundation, which I think will end, will lead us right into our next point that we want to go, how you need to train and, and prepare yourself to be in the marketplace. God has marketplace ministers to deal with his covenant promises and the execution of his treasury and blessings in the planet that he said would accompany your salvation. So the church focuses on the salvation, your spiritual health, your soul health, you coming into, you know, right standing, character, all of those things that will keep you in alignment with God and in alignment with his covenant of salvation with you. But what marketplace people do is focus on the quality of life that God said that coming into his kingdom would provide. If he said he was going to bless you with many blessings, mm -hmm. right? All of that kind of stuff. If that's a part of the covenant of salvation, how, what instruments does he use to get that to you? Prophets. Right. And not mm -hmm. only prophets, but even uh, marketplace ministers generically. And then I'm going to isolate specifically what prophets do in the marketplace. Okay. So if you're a marketplace minister in general, God is using you to take care of the needs or the life or quality of life 
he promised his people. Uh, you understand? That's heavy. Is that okay? I'm going to break it down because I get that that's an unusual thought, right, to have. Mm -hmm. So the church is dealing with the salvation, redemption, all of those sides of the covenant. Mm -hmm. What you want got kings and priests. We all of those sides of the covenant. Mm -hmm. But the other sides of the covenant that said you're going to have life, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost, that's the kingdom of God. This is what you can expect to be a kingdom citizen. Well, now we're dealing with your day-to-day -day existence, right? How does God translate blessings to your life? See to it that you have money, that you have a home, that you're provided for, that the things that you need in your day-to-day -day life are covered. Well, he wants to flood that industry with his own ministers so that his covenant to you can be executed the way he ordained it, as opposed to you having to go through Satan's kids. My God. Oh, is that okay to say? Mm -hmm. Because it wouldn't it be great that you could go to a job that agreed with your God? You can work in a business that agree with the principles and the values of yeah. what you serve yeah. as opposed to having to hide and shuck and dive and do all the things we got to do, you know, and then almost uh, uh, negotiate, be silent or feel like you're compromising something about the integrity of who you truly are mm -hmm. as an offspring or a child of God. Yeah, we've all been there. Exactly. So the reason why God has marketplace ministers is to fulfill that side, to give them a kingdom life in this world. Hallelujah. So when they go to work, when they're on their jobs, when they're working in their communities and they're doing their day to day life, the kingdom principles, the kingdom life of God can be experienced mm -hmm. in abundance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we don't think about the fact that he promised us a certain quality of life he did. under that. So he has to have ministers to facilitate that. Just like he has ministers working the altar every Sunday to facilitate what he promised you about your salvation. Mm -hmm. That has to happen in your day to day side in the kingdom. All right. Does that make sense? Yes, so the whole idea of why he has a kingdom is so that he can literally create an interface or a place, a realm, a sphere for his people while they're in this world, mm -hmm. like almost like an embassy, oh, while you're oh. in this world, okay, yeah. to actually still get the benefits of the kingdom you, you belong to, even though you're in a foreign place. My God. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you're dealing with the marketplace people, they handle those affairs for him. So they're going to deal with economy. We talk about a couple things here. They're going to deal with uh, economy, business, enterprise. Um, they're going to also deal with all of the consular sides of that policies, procedures, regulations, trade, commerce, all of that. Wow. So that you don't have to go, you don't have to beg Satan for nothing. You don't have yes. to come under him for any reason. You can stay protected by the blessings and the covenant of your embassy, mm -hmm. your relationship with God. Because how else will he facilitate that? Blessings can't stay invisible because then how would they help you when you need to right. pay your actual light bill? Though? Come on here. Okay, because a light bill, this they don't want they don't want your blessing or your prayer. I don't know if y'all ever try to pay with a prayer. Who's who's ever tried to pay a bill with a prayer? Okay, and see how that goes over. So all of the spiritual blessings that we've been blessed with, this is we're blessed with every spiritual blessing mm -hmm. has to be converted to a natural outlet method instrument hey. and conduit so that that can be your day to day existence under the lordship of Jesus Christ mm. in this world. Mm. And that's Lord. what the marketplace does for us. You know, you could go to church to get a prayer about your salvation, mm -hmm. a prayer about God, you know, keeping you in relationship with him and all of that spiritual stuff that we need when we're dry and weary. But where do you go when you need God to move economy, when you need God to push through, you know, what you need to establish in this world? Where do you go? That's your marketplace ministers. Yes. And before we get on to our next question, I want to mention this because chief, you opened this, you opened up sure. this information. So if you guys want to take the assessment, the PPM global uh, assessment for marketplace, it tells you um, what sphere that you're assigned to. Chief broke it down lovely as she's developed it with Dr. Price over a matter of what, about 10 years? Oh, longer than that longer now. Than my God. <laughs> All right. So if you want to take the assessment and find out what type of profit are you, or even if you are a profit, then I want you to go to www.ppmglobalassessments.com. Again, that's ppmglobalassessments.com. Sign up. Take the MAQ, the Ministry Assessment Questionnaire, okay? And you won't regret it. It literally, you guys, changed my life. I was about to give up on business. The first conversation I had with Chief, Mm -hmm. I was tired. I was over it. <laughs> and then I called into Chief Apostle's blog talk radio show. Mm -hmm. And I was just expressing my frustrations. And she said, you know, you need to take my MAQ. And then I'm going to link you with 
uh, my daughter, Dr. Tyler Price, and she's going to be able to work with you. And it's been a blessing ever since, you guys. I now am where I'm supposed to be. So go to that website, take that MAQ, and find out if you are indeed a marketplace prophet, as it identified me to be such, okay? Right. And so let me ask you, what does it actually look like how mm -hmm. the, when you are a marketplace profit and you may know you may not know no. how does that manifest in your life and in your business excellent question so now i want to add the profit to the marketplace definition oh, yeah, we, we lay down so we know marketplace people take care of the quality of life that we are to have in jesus christ okay. through your day-to-day -day experience but what the profit brings to that that's different mm -hmm. is that god actually makes that a part of your jurisdictional sphere to oversee those those affairs as a marketplace prophet you begin to steward the distribution of the blessings of god in people's day-to-day -day life all right and you do that not only through uh, a prayer and speaking the word, but when you're a prophet, prophets by definition are guardians, okay. stewards, guardians, mm -hmm. preservers, keepers. Is that true? Yes. Now absolutely. you think about that Hosea 12, 6, uh, talking about Moses. He, they said by a prophet, you were brought out of Egypt and by a prophet, you were preserved. Absolutely. Moses had to literally be everything. He had to preserve everything for them. You know what they food, their sustenance, mm. their economy. We're not just talking about, you know, Okay, bread. He supplied everything. 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 So at his mantle as a prophet had to literally secure a nation and oh all God. the national needs of a people, four million people that were being brought out of the protection, the economy, the provisions, mm. and the resource, albeit on a slave level, but of another nation. And now he had to take that responsibility on himself to provide that for that nation. And Moses was a prophet. prophet. Right. So he had to he had to be responsible for all that. So marketplace prophets are going to think differently. They're going to act differently. And what you hear from God will be very different. Mm -hmm. First of all, God's going to talk to you a lot about his econ his economic spheres. We call it the minister of finance. Right. Okay. So he's going to talk to you a lot about his economic spheres. He's going to talk to you about trade, commerce and distribution, how he gets things from there into the life of their people so that they're functioning and doing what they need to survive, what they need to actually succeed. Mm -hmm. Success isn't magic. Success isn't it shouldn't stay invisible. I mean, who wants an invisible success? So then how does God manifest the success? Well, marketplace profits become the conduit that God uses to manifest success in people's lives. Not only will a marketplace profit because they are prophetic, be able to see it, mm -hmm. but they'll, they'll be able to help a person walk through the manifestations of that to convert that spiritual information, those spiritual dreams and visions that God gives you, whether you're asleep on your bed or awake, converting that into the right materials, the right instruments and elements so that they can exist successfully here in our world. So you're going to see people's economy on them. You're going to see their ventures on them. You're going to hear the ideas that they say and automatically see how it can be converted into a natural thing. My God. So they can pick up human uh, uh, currencies, soul currencies, yes. and human capitals. So they pick up all of your spiritual currencies. What is a spiritual currency? What do you mean by that? I'm not talking about dollars and cents. And I'm talking about things that can be turned into dollars and cents. Okay. Okay, she's not making money off of her spirit. She's making money because this girl can write business plans. She can come up with strategies. She's very good at uh, digital marketing. So she, her, those abilities and her ability to see those things, understand those things and process those things turn into an economy. Absolutely. So when you're a marketplace prophet, you see economy in people everywhere. You see mm -hmm. their soul currencies and then God gives you pathways to convert them into a natural thing that people will exchange money for. Mm -hmm. cash for so that i'll see you know you can hear somebody's speaking ability you say you know what if you publicly speak not hear the lord saying that you can turn that public speaking into a whole business that if you just go to school and get training for this and focus on that then god will turn us into this and next thing you know you prophesy somebody into a whole empire come on okay because Absolutely. you see the empire and you're not just prophesying oh i just see god blessing you and loving you and helping you succeed no a, a marketplace prophet is going to go and show them how to market Oh, okay. Oh, How to on, place yeah. themselves in the market. Where do you fit in the market? So I see this public speaking ability on you. And I'm telling you that if you do the following things and follow this prescription, because marketplace prophets will hear the prescription of your success Absolutely. in the market, not your soul salvation, not what you need to do to be free. Those things are now. And trust me, there's a place for that because you talk about soul health. Oh, yeah. So they need to, their job is to, to mark 
the hindrances that will keep you from converting okay a particular skill to economy so if fear is in the way of you accepting this word about becoming this public speaker that's going to go out there and change lives in a particular arena mm -hmm. if fear is in the way blocking your natural currency the natural currency of speaking your natural currency to put words together in a way that people believe it right if it's in the way then that prophet will use their mantle to come against what's resisting you mm, come on they'll begin Hallelujah. to cut because remember prophets are designed to take on spiritual forces so when god assigns you to a particular realm you'll take on the forces of that sphere so the forces that the of economy, the forces that block money, the things that are rivaling, because you know, the enemy ain't gonna just go quietly into night. He's gonna oh, rival oh. your success and your ability to bring Jesus's economy and the economy he has for his people into the world. He's gonna rival that. Oh, and so the prophet yes, marketplace prophet's job is to recognize those powers, those principalities, all of those things. He's their job, their, their job is to identify that so that they can take every barrier or help you take every barrier out of the way. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. you need to be able to see how to take those things out of the way and still get the success because God's economy, God's blessings are in you. He did not write them in and drop them off at some bank account. Your blessings are in Chase Bank. Your blessings are in you. Come on. They're in your bosom. They are in those visions and dreams you've been sitting on. Those journals of ideas that you haven't been able to convert. They're sitting there. So God deposited his economy in your DNA. Mm -hmm. And a marketplace prophet has the ability to see beyond, see into the invisible, see beyond the natural Ooh. to pull out that spiritual economy that's sitting right there in your soul. Jesus. I know, you know what? I know you guys are already blessed, so I'm going to remind you. <laughs> if this is giving you the level of understanding that you have really been pressing into God about your identity, your capabilities, your business, if Chief Prophet is breaking you through, then do the honorable thing. Honor this word of the Lord coming forth from her. Honor the education. Honor her 20 years of ministry and show into this woman of God. As you can see, it's a very rich ground. I am a product of her mentorship yeah. and her teaching and her training. Business-wise, soul-wise, mental-wise, in so many ways, this woman has been a tremendous blessing to me. And I need for you to show into her. Dollar sign, T-A-L-A-P-R-I-C-E. Again, dollar sign, T-A-L-A-P-R-I-C-E. Make sure that you go ahead and you so, so, so into this very rich soil and into this wisdom. Amen. And now I want to say this. Now, so we heard all of the things that a marketplace prophet does for you. Just some of them. Just some of Oh, Just some of a little peek, a little peek. If you want oh, more yeah. of that, you got to go to Price University. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they're about... I think 13, just here, 13 different things that a marketplace prophet's mantle will do for the Lord. My mm. God. Okay, because mm. he uses, again, he's using your mantle to take care of how he will economize his people in their day-to-day -day lives through the market, mm. right? So My he God. will do that. So we're talking about just 13 different things. And these are things that if you're interested, if you're really called to literally become God's steward, mouthpiece and guardian in the market, that means he's using you to one of the things it says here. Mm. I love it to guard the Lord's uh, material treasures, because remember, everything spiritual becomes material. Mm -hmm. So you want to know how to guard the Lord's. It's, in fact, you naturally think this way. So before your calling become, becomes something identified, it is something that is identified in you. You mm -hmm. naturally will see the world prophetically. Absolutely. If you're called to be a prophet, people think that they're, you know, you're becoming a prophet because you're self-appointed. No, they happen to see the world through a prophetic lens, meaning that they're always in God's future. They're always in the invisible. They're always trying to pull in what's next. Their eye is always looking beyond the obvious and piercing into what could be. See, those are that's the natural lens of a person who is called to the prophetic. You have a natural eye. To see things that way and if you're called to the marketplace then you're always pulling in and seeing the future of trends the future of economy the future of treasure so when you thought when you talked about or asked the question in here about what does how do you what does a marketplace profit do and how will they begin to show that up mm -hmm. you look at the fact that you're gonna you're gonna be able to help organizations plot and plan their future because listen we call oh, it prophetic. Oh, no, that's good. Right? 
we call it prophetic, but we're looking at what? Predictions, mm -hmm. forecasting, mm -hmm. projections, mm -hmm. all of that are what marketplace profits bring to an organization. Absolutely. So when people want to say, why would I want to work with or partner with the marketplace profit is because they can bring you the understanding of where God is going in the future in a particular organization trend. Doesn't matter what it is. A marketplace profits naturally can, can define trends. They can naturally predict when something's going in and out of season, mm -hmm. because remember profits are uh, responsible for times and seasons. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. It makes perfect sense. And so, that makes sense to you guys. Hashtag this makes sense. Exactly. Hashtag this makes sense. And if you are blessed by this, you know, we do our hashtag y'all hashtag. I am blessed. And so furthermore, let me ask you, Chief, how can we make, because we know that money is a spirit. Some right. people in the secular arenas, they say money is an energy. We say here, money is a spirit. So because it is a spirit and we have dominion, how can we as marketplace prophets bring the spirit of money under our subjection? That is primarily what a marketplace prophet would do, because remember, prophets are there to contend with the, the spirits of uh, other spirits that want to come against what God wants to do. OK, mm -hmm. because the most of the work that you're going to be doing is going to be in the spirit. You'll be able to see the new spirits that are coming in something and the new spirits that are walking out. You'll be able to discern when the spirit of uh, let's just say when you're working with the business, you'll be able to discern when the spirit of theft walks in or when the when a mimicking spirit of success walks in, when a con artist walks in. See, all of those kind of things, a deceptive spirit. See, they do all of that for organizations in the marketplace. Right. Much so. so money is a spirit because God is spirit mm. and all of our treasuries and blessings come from the Lord. So they're going to start in the same form of the very nature of who God is. Is mm -hmm. that okay to yes, say? That so it begins as a spirit. And the, and the goal of the marketplace prophet, again, is to take that spiritual economy, take that spiritual blessing and turn it into a natural resource. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that okay? Now that's real manifestation. Exactly. Because you, you have to do a lot of conversion of currency. Okay. Spiritual currency to a natural form mm -hmm. because you can't use spiritual currency in this world. We already said you can't pay your bills with prayer. So you have to convert it into something that will produce cash, a substance that people can see and use as a matter of exchange. A product or a service. A product or a service. So you have to teach people how to, what Dr. Price says, cash in on themselves. Oh, yes. Cash you in on you. House, you said. Right. So you have to teach them how to cash in on those on those spirits. And then to do so, you, it's not just a matter of let me just pray, 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 pray. A marketplace prophet will have to literally walk you through. First of all, they're going to have to diagnose and dissect what are the things that are coming against your business success. Absolutely. So they're going to, okay, they're going to be able to see things that maybe a church prophet won't see as what's coming against your business success, whether it's your ideas, whether it's your timing, whether it's your approach or strategy, or if they have to diagnose and go deeper beneath the surface and actually look at maybe some soul issues. Okay, yes. Okay, and how about our famous ancestral devils and generational curses that are sitting on the line? We mm -hmm. talk about nine different guardians that you have to face off with to break through in success. Yes, and that's in the book Money is a Spirit by Dr. Paula Price. You can catch that on Amazon. And that's important because mm -hmm. sometimes how many guys have lived repetitive cycles and you don't know why, no matter what you do, you went to everybody's 10 step program. You did all the 90 techniques and yet somehow they're not working for you. They're not working for you because there is a spiritual blockade there. There might be an ancestral covenant and an authority or something that you're authorizing through your behaviors, your ignorance and misunderstanding that a marketplace profit has to come in and begin to identify invisibly. What is blocking the forces and powers of money and wealth from coming into your life? Yes, and that's actually one of my specialties, proven success and removing the blockade out of other marketplace people, whether they be prophetic or, or right. evangelical or not. And so I actually am launching a program as Chief told me, you need to do this. So I'm going to do it because it said- if I'm you turning your, your economy into cash. Exactly. Right? She told me, she said- you can pray and you need to pray for these businesses for 30 days. So she's actually the one that inspired us praying for every, well, for business owners throughout the show. And so I'm launching a new product. It's called the 30 day business, uh, hedge 
prayer package, 30 day business page prayer package, where for every day, for 30 days, I'm going to send you a recording of me praying for your business and as the Lord leads. If you are interested in signing up, it is not free. It is an investment. Okay. It's an investment of $199. And you guys, that's beta. My prayers alone, my prayers, my counsel, my education, all of the training and mentorship that I've received from Dr. Tala and my chief prophet, um, Paula Price, all goes in and culminates into the prayers and what I'm able to deliver to God's marketplace people. If you are interested, go to www.thekbacademy.com. Again, that's www.the kvacademy.com and sign up. It's only going to be $1.99 for a few months. Why? Because my prayers have brought people into the six and seven figure stream and have grown and enlarged their business capacity, finances, as well as their organization. So this is a beta run. All right. So go ahead, go to the website, check it out and sign up. So let me ask you, what are some things that you're, because I know I have people on here that have been, uh, um, picking it up by the spirit of God, people here that have been accused of being a witch because mm -hmm. people have not understood how they, and they don't understand how they prophetically manifest. Right. Well, it's important for us to know that uh, I, I'm going to say something real quick. So y'all gonna have to pray for me. I don't know. Praise the Lord. Y'all praying for me out there right now. Get a bull lift, shot. Up the, lift it up, lift it up. Cause we going in okay. and when we have to confront devils and hit them square in the head sometimes, you know, yes. it can be a little something. Gotta be ready for that. Definitely. But witchcraft is not an original. So I want to just go on record to let you know before there were ever a witch, right? There were dunamites. Listen, oh, Jesus. Okay. There were miracle workers. Yeah. Woo! Because the light, the, we already know the dark can't originate anything because it's not a creator. Really? All it can do is pervert. So everything that they're doing and the systems that they're using that ignore their creator God, they got from his first model. They're getting that from the light. They are constantly pirating the light. And what they do is they strip the light of its deity, its deity's mind, its deity's intentions, mm. and its deity's fruit. My God. So they use our practices, they use our principles, they use all of those things, right? Because we wonder why sowing and reaping work for the wicked. Are we not wondering? Oh, what well, yes. you're in the marketplace so they the principles are the principles because the foundations and the pillars of the earth are what they are for producing life and success what they do is manipulate and contrive those things for their own will mm. for their own purposes for their own gains and they do it okay at the expense of something else My God. does that so you want to understand witchcraft Mm -hmm. So a witch is not going to point you back to Jesus Christ. A witch is not going to make sure that you're operating under the righteousness and the guidelines of righteousness according to Christ Jesus. Yeah. If you want to know whether a person is operating in genuine witchcraft in their business practices yes. and in how they are uh, working with you and partnering with you as a minister or person, right? I want you to go peep out the book, 48 Laws of Power. Oh, Ooh. Yes. Because 48 laws of power shows you how a witch works in the business arena. My, okay. Oh my God. You want to see witchcraft at work. Because see, I can say a lot of deep and spiritual things and we can get into doctrinal debates and all kinds of, you know, discussions about what I think this. Are. Go read it and see what they tell people to do. And you'll see now why you need prophets in the marketplace. Why God needs to have prophets to counteract what they're doing yes. because they they're, they're people the things that they teach them to succeed and get their wealth mm -hmm. and to get their economy how to rape creation how to rape the kingdom how to how to steal and kill and destroy how to manipulate deceive and contrive how to con and all of this they give them actual practices and classes for how to rip you off mm -hmm. and steal your inheritance my god and so if you really want to understand so that you have a good comparison between am I getting played by a witch? Am I getting played by some marketplace person that's just trying to go read those and then see if you see those principles, those behaviors and those tactics in action and the way that this person who's calling themselves a, a prophet is working with you. 
So if they're employing those things, you've got some good markers. Here, we do everything by assessment. Absolutely. We don't do it by our feelings and our knower and, you know, some invisible sentimental thing. Mm -mm. We don't no. do sentimental. No. If we're going to do spiritual, then we're going to identify the, the, the nature, attributes, and character of these spirits. And these spirits have literally pinned themselves and embodied themselves under the guise of, you know, success tips and self-help work and dark psychology and dark persuasion and verbal manipulation and on it goes. So they have pinned their strategies. These witches are not out here just working you in the backyard with a cauldron. They're yeah. in these books that you're reading. Yeah. They're at these conferences that you're going to thinking somebody's going to make you wealthy, bring you into this mm -hmm. so that they can show you the way, the dark arts of how they accumulated their wealth and success and how they're raking over a creation and stealing it from their creator. How to hijack it from the hand of the mighty, of the almighty. Jesus. So if that I can say a million things, and I have over the years as far as markers. But the next, you know, we get into tough discussions about Jezebelian stuff and all this. But it don't, I mean, you know, yes. because the way the church identifies Jezebel is very different than the way she actually operates, because her operations are in all of these books I'm telling you about. Okay, they're in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they're working them every day. And they do it so subtly that and so imperceptibly that you need a prophet who has high acumen and discernment, mm -hmm. who's been trained to know the forces in the spirits that come against and want to counteract God. Mm -hmm. See, a prophet in the marketplace has to be 100 percent convinced that they're there to represent the interests of Jesus Christ, that they're there to see his, his kingdom interests expanded, his people protected and everything that belongs to him going back to who he is. OK, mm -hmm. they protect the interests of Jesus Christ and they fight for him and his interest to have a place and a right to exist in that marketplace. You will not kick us out. You will not cancel us. You will not do all of this. We have a right to exist. And they fight daily with economy, with money, with the innovation and all of those things to see to it that Jesus does not lose his dominion in the world and his authority in the world. Well, witchcraft is going to subtly undermine that on a regular basis. They're always going to subtly try to siphon uh, uh, the economy that belongs to Jesus Christ and divert it to their own interests Absolutely. because this is a war. Yeah, it is. It's OK, a war. so we can say a thousand things. But if you're a marketplace prophet, God will station you in the marketplace to push back on those spirits that are couching themselves as coaches. They're couching themselves oh, yes. as, as medicinal, you know, health and wellness, mind and body, whatever. OK, mm -hmm. so you want a, a marketplace prophet can go in there and say, uh, you're a devil. You a devil. I, that ain't God. I don't care how you, what all the results you, ma you know, manufacture in here. Because again, they know that it's taking that soul from the creator and bringing it into the economy of something else. Understand, mm -hmm. in the natural world, we're looking at dollars and cents. In the spiritual world, souls are economy. The highest. The highest economy, because you can't even innovate anything that someone would buy without a soul. If it doesn't enter a soul, it can't enter a bank account. Because how else will it get there? Okay. Does that make sense? So if you're going to be in the marketplace and you want to be pure, because some of you do want to do this purely for Jesus Christ, you know, you're not trying to be adversarial, but you can be duped if you're not aware of these tactics and strategies that they're now calling education. They're now calling, you know, coaching. Think and grow rich. Think and grow rich. The secret. Okay. All of that hidden mysteries of whatever it is mm -hmm. you know powers 10 steps to succeed how to how to use your inner mind to whatever all of that kind of stuff you want to be able to discern what their tactics are so as a marketplace prophet you can bring in the principles and the powers of jesus christ to those ventures and safeguard your organization mm -hmm. from demonic penetration because sometimes you don't know that the person you hired with the bomb resume okay. got there by using these principles. But now you can start listening to the words that they use, mm -hmm. okay, to know who they're really giving credit to for their success. Absolutely. Okay, because anybody can, like the devil did in the wilderness, use a sliver of scripture, but he mixed it with his mm -hmm. own belief systems. Mm -hmm. He merged them. He fused the Bible with his thoughts, with My his God. his outlook, and with his uh, agenda. So those things are important for us to know when we're talking about how do we do that and why God puts prophets in the marketplace because they're guardians, they're preservers, they're keepers, they're protectors, they're defenders. They did it with their lives all the time. If you look through that scripture. Absolutely. And so again, I want you to go ahead and sow into this chief prophet. Again, her cash app is dollar sign T A L A price. I'm going to keep saying it. We, we unapologetically 
believe in sowing into the lives of prophets here on the Miss Bankable Show. Hallelujah. And so also before I ask her, her our final question for tonight, I want you to make sure because we just have about 10 minutes left, a little less. Make sure that you're putting your business into the comments so we can go through and choose about two or three businesses to pray yes. for. Also, if you are looking to have prayer every day from this profit of training me for your business to guard it, to safe hold it, to bring in your bl blessings, to fight off the devils that are trying to, as she said, squat yes. on your inheritance, please go to www.thekvacademy.com and sign up for my 30 day business hedge business hedge prayer package okay and so let me ask you chief wow this has been so good right hashtag this has been good hashtag this has been good but let me ask you what does god expect of his entrepreneurs he expects you to create a, a not only an economy but a life system mm. to protect his people in this world Ideally, we need uh, entrepreneurs out there creating uh, in real estate, creating housing, creating places for people to live in communities where they don't have to worry about all of this other infiltration. OK, he's looking for people to own companies where people can go to work and know that they're going to be treated with fairness. I mean, look at Chick-fil-A. Right. OK, and mm -hmm. I'm just using them because that's the one that everybody knows most popularly. Yes. But they create an environment where people can literally love God, serve God and get paid and get fair wages and, you know, be treated with a certain level of Glory dignity and God. respect in their day to day life. He's expecting us to be able to exemplify the, the kingdom, give them a taste of heaven right here on earth and in their everyday sphere of life. Mm -hmm. OK, yes. so we need more people. We need Christians everywhere so that God can fulfill his covenant blessings. I want to say something that's very powerful that you guys are experiencing right now. It's been harder and harder for God to literally answer prayers as quickly as we remember them, because the hard heartedness and unbelief of that is is literally being uh, penetrated through darkness, through these witches mm -hmm. that we worried about. OK, because mm -hmm. witchcraft, remember, is always about crafting something. So think about the language that's being crafted about the church. Well, you can't trust preachers. You can't trust the church. You can't trust a Christian. Well, you know they all about the money. Well, you know they all faith. Uh, well, you know. Right. Now listen to that. I want you to just just open your mind for just a moment and recognize that witchcraft crafts things. So they're crafting a narrative to divert Jesus's economy to their efforts. So you don't want to mm -hmm. sow to churches. You right. don't want to give to ministers. You don't want to do business with Christians. Skeptical. And so you're skeptical. So you have all of this in your psyche that will prevent you from being open to blessing God's businesses so he can bless his people which is going to create a strain it's going to lock down the supply chain between heaven and earth because it runs on faith he said without faith it's impossible so if there's no faith in the church there's no faith in the ministers there's no faith in the people then you're going to watch a tremendous slowdown of God being able to answer your prayers through a natural instrument that means he's got to scour the earth to look through who's going to believe him enough and trust his word enough and trust his voice enough My to God. go and bless somebody who's crying now, God, please send somebody, please help me get this job. Please open up favor. Woo. And it's easier for him to tap people of faith who believe in him, whose spirits are in tune with him to say, I don't know why, but God just told me to come and do this. I don't know why, but God told me to give you the job. I don't know why, but oh, now yes. he's got to work through all of this, you know, layers of evil, layers of hard heartedness, layers of indifference, layers of dismissiveness in order to get up just one thing through, get humanity to hear him to do one thing. Okay, so you're watching a slowdown of the supply chain and it's been very hard. Some of you guys right now, I can tell as we switch to the businesses, some of you guys right now are facing those barriers. You're facing those blockades. You've been praying and standing and wondering if, if God is hearing you. You're wondering if he can, you know, if he's going to answer your prayer, come through right now. He's having to press your faith oh, because yes. he's trying to find faith in the earth to match your faith to produce a product. Mm. Does that make sense? He's scouring the earth. Jesus said, will I find faith on the earth? But he's looking to find faith, to match your faith in him so that he can have a conduit and an outlet to move through because God has to move through something natural. He has to move through something material. Mm -hmm. 
because you're not asking him for spiritual blessings, you know, like hope and joy and, you know, those spiritual things and more strength and more diligence. You know what I mean? Those are those spiritual blessings that you're asking. You ask him for. We all pray for it on a daily basis to do more grace, etc. But when you need a natural thing done in the natural world, he has to find a natural conduit. Absolutely. And that's what we've been facing off with, which is why we need more prophets in the marketplace, more people in the marketplace. So God can tap them when he wants them to be a resource. And that's the other thing he expects from his entrepreneurs to be a conduit. Yes. Look up conduit. Don't just take it for advantage. Okay. So you may know what it means, but actually look it up. Look up conduit and see that he expects you to be a conduit, your business to be a conduit, your your ventures to be a conduit so that he can expand the reach of his people and that he can literally fulfill his word. Sometimes you make the difference in which and when God can fulfill the word on someone's life, when Absolutely. God can actually answer someone's prayer, push them through the next level. Mm -hmm. So he also is expecting his entrepreneurs to be that conduit and instrument in the planet. Because some of you guys, God's going to bless your business now because you always sow, you always tithe, you're mm -hmm. always obedient, you're always there, you're coming to the aid of the Lord. And I can tell you right now, by the Spirit of God, the entrepreneurs who come to the aid of the Lord in this season, they will find abundance out of nowhere. God says, I'll send a raven in to cover your bills, to see to it that you're not put out of your location. Yeah, Somebody who's watching this now, you're crying out to be for your business location to be saved, trying to just make the rent, trying to just get the money you need. You say, God, I've been faithful, I've been, I've been trying to do this with with the way you said it i can't cut a break but right now in the name of jesus christ god i thank you that you're going to be sending economy their way and that they'll be able to keep their facility they'll be able to keep the things that you have given them in this season and will not be robbed see when you come to the aid of the lord then he uses a messenger like me who doesn't even know your name hey. to begin to speak out what he wants to happen yes. in your life and what he wants to bring to pass in your world right now he says don't lose heart and don't lose hope and continue to mm -mm. he said don't even lose faith and your service to me because you're on that edge of wondering man is it in vain did i just do all of this for no reason fighting that strong spirit of futility but i speak to it now in jesus name and god i thank you that you're reviving hope in the heart hope in the soul and that they don't give up on the faith in god and now lord i'm asking that you would send faithful messengers that you would send your own agents on assignment to see to it that that's who they that's who they talk to the next time they pick up the phone to negotiate for whatever they need i'm asking that your people will be there and that they would get grace extended favor god things that people never do things that landlords never say i thank you lord that it's going to move on their behalf <clears throat> that's going to move on their behalf in this season and i'm asking that because you come to the aid of the lord if you're a business owner right now who comes to the aid of the lord i'm asking that the lord would dispatch his own resources and his own uh, his own angels to fight your battles i'm asking him to go in and fight on your behalf and to see to it that you make a way out of nowhere for them to come through <clears throat> you won't lose your facility in jesus name jesus. you won't lose this thing you'll be able to pay your bills on time to get you through this season i just see an eight month it will be very lean as god begins to just navigate you but like he does for the righteous i've never seen the righteous forsaken he's going to make a way of escape for you in this eight month window i don't know who you are i see a little bit of what you do but if you're watching today lay a hold of this word hi this lay a hold of this word and you might need to invest in what she does i'm a witness which is why i told her i watch that when she prays and she's faithful she will not miss one day she will not miss one night she comes and she did this without anybody giving her a dime yes she was praying for people to succeed because she's a minister of the gospel of jesus christ and you may need to sign up for that today if that's you because you are in a war you are battling right now and I pray for your mind because I see the enemy trying to mess with your mind, pull the very fabric of your sanity mm -mm, apart. And God, I thank you. Mm -mm. You said you were not forsake. So, Lord, I thank you. We've never seen the forsaken. You will not forsake them now. And I thank you, God. I come against the depression. I come against the double mindedness that's trying to make you go back and forth and back and forth and forth and back. God, I bring anchor of stability, love, power, and a sound mind to you right now in Jesus' name. And we overturn this thing because a lot of it is a lot. Now, God, I thank you that you will go ahead and help them work through this next eight month window and begin, Father God, to move and maneuver them around, Father God, every system, every circumstance everything father god that is needed to for them to succeed and get to the other side where your promises to them will be fulfilled 
So God, I come against hopelessness. If you're an entrepreneur right now, I come against hopelessness. I shut down hopelessness over you in Jesus' name. You will not be hopeless in this hour. And that's a spiritual economy. That's a spiritual currency. That's a spiritual blessing. And I'm asking God to release it to you now that you have the strength to get it through this season. So that mm -mm, don't, but somebody's on the verge of wanting to shut down. God says you're going to shut down a year too soon because on the other side of the, the, the tide in the world is about to shift where people will now focus on the things that you offer. They will go from being incidental to instrumental. My so God. don't quit because the year, this next year, it's gonna, the tide's gonna change and you're gonna go from people not being interested, not caring, they're not being, all right, all of a sudden mm -hmm. to, the, to the literal sentiment of the culture changing, to making what you do a top priority. So that's what I would say just on those that are watching right now. I don't know if you've got names in there yes. that we can just call out and, and put under this prayer. Okay. All right, team. Find me two other people. In the meantime, while we're finding two other people, please tell us what products and services you're offering. Oh, products mm -hmm. and services I'm offering. My goodness. Well, you can go check that out on my website. If you're a new new to the prophetic and you want to know how to do some of the things that we talked today, I have a wonderful book on there called Educating the Prophet. It really maps mm -hmm. out that journey, okay, of understanding this because I just I, I see that there are a couple of people on there who God has been tapping and trying to awaken you to this reality of who he's called you to be prophetically. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you to go get Educating the Prophet. It's a great book right there on my website that is offered yes in terms of that and then of course i always have 2020 prophetics yeah all right so if you want to know more about the prophetic you don't even have to be a prophet to be a part yes. of 2020 because a lot of times we just like the questions we had today some of you are like i don't know what they do i don't know why they're here and everything i hear about them is negative so i mean what is it so this is an open forum so that you can meet and understand, ask questions and learn more about what the prophetic does. We're trying to take that whole, you know, charlatan, snake oil salesman, you know, uh, shellac off of the prophetic and just thinking that we're only here for these particular reasons. And so that's 2020 prophetics. You can go visit 2020 propheticscom as far as services and things I'm offering. And then of course, prophetic hyphen ed.com yes yes i am a soul restoration coach oh, yes, and yes. i do i work with business people i work with ministers i work with every type of person i've done it for over 15 years now and i do a what we call 3d soul restoration coaching and i deal with those currencies those soul currencies that are literally being eaten up by the devourer you know her Ooh. past hurts Ooh. past pains past traumas that are eating up your soul e uh, currencies and so sometimes you need somebody to rebuke the devourer that's destroying the fruit of your ground and you can't bring anything to harvest you can't produce anything you can't make anything happen you've been trying and trying and trying and it can't come forth because there's a soul devourer that's there a soul saboteur that's literally eating up everything god promised you before it can actually be born mm -hmm. so i do a lot of 3d soul restoration coaching so if you're looking for someone to help you work through the issues of your soul work through those other invisible forces that might be sabotaging your success hindering your soul of success from producing definitely check me out okay you can go to uh, prophetic-ed.com yes. look at the services that we offer i think it's right there up on the screen mm -hmm. do it yes, it is. because some of you guys it's a worthy investment because we want to break you beyond and we've got to break you beyond from the point of the break ah you hear that all right so the three make sure you go to tylerprice.com also visit prophetic-ed.com for the list of all of the services. Chief, now do you see why she's chief prophet Tyler Price? Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't forget to sow into her. Her cash app is floating down in the lower thirds. Now our three businesses, and then we're going to call it a night. Hallelujah. Yes. Our first business is called the Crown Academy. Crown Academy. The Very Crown good. Academy. And what does the Crown Academy do? Did they say what they did? That is a, a a wonderful name. We can come back to them. Put in what you do, Crown Academy. Then we have Such a Lady Extensions, which is my sponsor. Well, Such a Lady Extensions, you know we are pressing for your economy and pressing for what you need to do. God says that your number one issue this year, the word for you is inconsistency. Mm. Mm. He says that you have to consistently hit this. 
on a regular basis. So he says he's going to be really challenging you to be consistent because the hand of the diligence of, shall prosper. Now, there's some networking things that you're, you, that God gave you. There's some other strategies that he put out there that you have yet to do or you've been going back and forth. Well, I don't know if I want to do that or show up there or go mm. and push. And I mean, I went to the last three and nothing really happened. And uh, I'm just kind of, you know, getting burnt out on the press of trying to find success. So God says he, this particular season, if you wanna break beyond, press for your success. Press for your success. Because I, I just hear the spirit of the Lord saying something that he told me. Sometimes you have to be there for when your competition drops off. Come on. Number one is number one because they're willing to do what number two won't. So you have to press for your success. And that's going to break you through. Now, God, I speak to just the weariness over her from having to fight, 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 fight. And she's fighting on so many fronts right now in her life. So, God, we speak to her soul. We speak to all the weary places in her right now that just want to give up, that are collapsing under the weight of diverse things happening in her life. And, God, I thank you for strengthening her, giving her the strength one more time to go after this one more time, to get up every day so that she can see the product and the hope of her faith, the finishing of her faith. God says, go after your finish faith. Don't give up a, a, mm, 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 one day, one moment, one year, one, okay, one second before your faith produces the harvest that he promised you. So God, I thank you for giving her finishing faith, finishing faith, pressing faith, pushing faith, not just faith to start, but the faith to complete. We release it upon you right now. Lady Extension, you will be a completer. Hallelujah. And the strength to finish in Jesus' name. Yes, hallelujah. Then we have the Crown Academy, which is a not-for-profit for the youth. Ah, I absolutely love it, okay? Because we need that right now. But I just see that, uh, well, first of all, I see that you're a handshake away from something. I don't know if you're in the process of pursuing or trying to do or trying to go after. I don't know if it's funding or just an extension of your project. But God just says you're a hand away, one handshake away from meeting the person that you need that will literally kick this thing into the next place that God wants it to go. Because he's right now uh, wanting to use it. He says he's going to also have you find tune what you're doing. He's going to have you go back and look at certain aspects of the vision that he's going to want you to mature. And he's going to mm -hmm. want you to literally uh, ex expound upon because certain aspects of it are not necessarily clicking in the ears of the hearer. So he says he's going to have you fine tune your pitch. I don't know what you're going to be standing in front of. I'm not even uh, I'm not even looking at a time frame, but I am looking at the, the, the tweaking that needs to happen. Get with a consultant, have, a, have another eye, just kind of look over your vision, pour over the things that you're doing, because one tweak of a word will capture the eye of the person that God is wanting to use to really break this thing through for you. So don't go, don't get weary in doing well. Don't get frustrated at all in this. You're a handshake away. So God, I thank you for Crowned Academy. I thank you right now that, mm, that you're going to open this up as a resource in that community, that it is something that you want, Father God, to literally change the future and the destinies of the lives that this institution is touching. The future, God. And we know how you feel about widows and orphans in your future generations. And so God, right now, I thank you. I right now give her the grace Grace, oh, and the Holy Ghost says, believe in yourself, yes. believe in yourself, crowned academy, believe in yourself, yes. believe in yourself. I come against insecurity. I come against all of those things, Father God, that are ripping through the mind, self-doubt, double uh, second guessing, even great ideas and the things that God is showing you and telling you to do about your business, which is why we need marketplace profits, because we second guess very great ideas, not thinking it's us or not knowing if it's God. And so you've been wrestling with some of that as well. And so God, I thank you right now that you will bring cohesion to the vision and that you will literally, Father God, uh, cause it to literally take on on the words, the language, and the, the image uh, and appearance, God, that is necessary to capture the eye of people that want to back this and get behind what she's doing. So, God, I thank you mm, that you give her the courage, that you give her boldness, that you give her confidence, God, and then a competent strategy to break beyond. And we bless you for it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then the final business for tonight is Crunk Cardio. Now, I happen I, to know that they do live streaming. How fun to is gospel that? gospel music. They're like, like, you know, like, you know, you like the rap. Yes. The, the gospel rap flame and all of them. And that's what they do. That's what they're specializing in. Oh, how funny. First of all, you got me at cardio. Because, I mean, I'm thinking about my own self. Hey, man. So, God, we. Not 
literally be discouraged before she enters the prime. Right now, you're at the beginning phases of it and the birthing of it. But God says prime, prime, prime season is coming for you soon. So don't don't give up and don't get weary. Use this as an opportunity to perfect what he's given you to do, to sharpen up everything, to work on your marketing. And he says that you're going to need to spend a little bit of more money on your marketing. Don't rely on just the conventional ways. Like social media is not going to do all the work. Right. All right. You're going to have to do some, some, I just see you sending out some mailers. Okay. Things hey. of that nature, getting stuff out there to, uh, to your, uh, to an expanded audience so that you can hit the perfect demographic for what you're doing. But you're, you're not in the sweet spot yet because clearly you're trying to get more money for it and all of this. But you are coming into a season where you're going to get in, in front of the prime people because there's a prime uh, a audience, a prime market for what you do. And then it's going to be like, well, whoever heard of crunk cardio to, oh, my God, every, uh, I'm, I, I'm trying to figure out how to manage the growth. Mm -hmm right? You're going to enter into that kind of moment. So God says, don't rely on just social media. Don't kind of think that something else is going to do all of your marketing work. He says, hit that ground and keep hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, because you have a lot of competitors in the fitness market. Yes. So you've got to keep your voice out there for your particular market and your particular demographic. And God says, be, be, I just hear him saying also, be very specific about that. You can't market to everybody. So know the people who will be most responsive to your brand so that you can ISO your marketing efforts to that particular market. And then you'll all of a sudden find a boom. You know, sometimes we think what we're doing is wrong. Again, how we started our call today because we're in the wrong sphere or putting it in front of the wrong right, people. Right. Now you put your idea in front of the wrong people, you might as well buy a coffee or at least you think you should because they've been devastated and killed it. Okay. Oh, okay. Your little heart broke. You just, oh, <laughs> no, your, your, your you're just broke so broke. Okay, broke. you're just done. You're like, oh my God, I'm breaking down. But the reality is, he says, you just got to get in front of the right audience that will really appreciate the flavor and the style of what you're doing. OK, yes. and the uniqueness that you're bringing to this existing brand. Mm -hmm. So demographics, demographics, demographics. I don't know if she's ever told you this, but this girl is good at helping you find your market. She does analytics for days. And so you just need to find your market. And once you do that, we did that within a very unusual product that we're working on as a business. Yes. OK, isn't it true? Yes. Very true. My God, oh, Lord. It's been a it, it was that day. This thing is so unique. Right. That we had to go out there and figure out what the market was. And it wasn't the reason the person was doing it. Mm -hmm. But once we found the right market, the response to it changed, and now we have viability. Yes. So that's what I would say to you, uh, cardio, crunk cardio. Okay, so God, I thank you right now for releasing it. Open up the market to her. Open up the market plans, God. Open up, Father God, the avenue for her to see the exact people that she needs to get this in front of so that she doesn't feel like she's wasting her time, energy, mm -hmm. or efforts, or that this is not going to work, or that it may just end up being one of those little side fun extracurricular things. God, this can really become a unique brand for her. It can literally be an outlet for what you want her to do. She's very passionate, not only about this, but God also says one more thing, crunk, uh, cardio, add the health and wellness components. Yes. Add the health and wellness coaching. Add that to it because this thing is all you all in when it comes to health and wellness. So add it all together. Bring your whole package together and God open up the demographic. We open up the hearts and minds now. We open up the pathways for her to connect to where she needs to be and where she needs to go in this particular venture. And so... Mm -mm -mm. And God, and I thank you for it. We, we, we remove all of the draws and all of the things that are eclipsing what she wants to do. That she will no longer, Father God, be invisible to the market that she needs to reach. So we open up visibility and we increase that for her in this particular season. Mm, and we bless you and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And mm, ah, yes. Shaka. Amen. That was good. Amen. Hashtag we did it. Yes. Hashtag we did it. Yes. So just. Two, three final things. Make sure that you sow into Dr. Tyler Price, dollar sign Tyler Price. Also, make sure that you visit her website, TylerPrice.com, and Prophetic-Ed.com to get a list of all of her powerful, life-changing services. Make sure that you do that. Do not delay. Do not let the enemy come in with the ravens and swoop up all of the seeds that have been sown into your soul and into your business, okay? Don't do that. Go and do, to those websites. Look what she has and sign up. Sign up. Make the investment. Yes. Make the sacrifice. It's going to richly bless your life and your inheritance. Finally, make sure that you go and visit my sponsor, such a lady extensions.com. Yes, such a lady xtnd.com. She is also 
speaking on this broadcast, go and visit her and make sure finally, 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 if you are looking for a hedge to be made around about your business, if you want to get that ego out there looking out on the landscape, seeing what devil's trying to breach your borders, then you need to go ahead, go to thekvacademy.com, sign up for my 30-day business hedge prayer package for $1.99, very limited time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We had a blast. Yes, we did. Make sure that you tune in next Monday for the Miss Bankable Show. Signing off. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you.